Peak efficiency and high quality management experience are key when it comes to our device's firmware root OS. At the end of 2022, we released its newest version filled with many additions and improvements to make it even better. So let's walk through the most significant changes and improvements of root OS 7.3. The star feature of this root OS update is the addition of two new communication protocols, OPC UA and BACnet. The OPC UA protocol enables machines to communicate and share data with each other and with other cloud platforms. It's especially relevant to those who work in industries like energy and utility or industrial and automation. Let's see how we can configure communication with OPC UA servers on root OS. Firstly, we have to log in to our router's user's interface using our username and password. To access the OPC UA page, we firstly have to download it through the package manager that is located in the services section. After the installation, the OPC UA page is located in the services section. In the OPC UA page, we see the general configuration as well as the OPC UA servers list and OPC UA value groups that are used to group the information received from the server. Firstly, we have to add the OPC UA server. In the server configuration page, we add the server nodes that extract specific information from the server. In our example, we choose to, uh, to gather air humidity and air temperature values. When adding a node, we have to insert the namespace index, the ID type, and the ID itself. After that, we can save. We repeat the same step for the humidity. After the nodes have been added, we can input the server's IP address as well as the timeout value of the request. After that, we enable the server and we can save the configuration. After saving the server configuration, we create a valid group that allows us to format the collected information. In the general configuration, we can see various formatting options, but for this example, let's focus on the group value section. Here we add what information should be selected from the server. In our example, let's remember we want to select the temperature and the humidity. Each value group can contain one server node from one server, so in our example, we need two group values. After creating the group values, we have to enable them, enable the value group configuration itself, insert the period value which indicates in what intervals should the information be gathered from the server, and insert the prefix, midfix, and postfix values which allow us to format the gathered information. After that, we just save the configuration. Then we can test the configuration by clicking the test button on the value groups. If the configuration is correct, we should see the values that are received from the OPC UA server. The BACnet protocol is used to control and manage PLC controllers. This protocol makes it so that each piece of equipment wouldn't have to switch to other operating or control systems, enabling much more efficient and cost-effective data exchange. If you want to use the BACnet protocol, here's how. Firstly, we have to download the BACnet package from the package manager. After the installation, the BACnet service can be found in the side menu. BACnet configuration is pretty straightforward. In our example, we are going to configure BACnet over IP. 
For that, we need to enable the botnet service, input the required serial information. In our example, all default values will suffice except the MSTP MAC address, which needs to be set to 19. After that, just save the configuration. To test if the configuration is correct, we can use software called yet another botnet explorer. In its interface, firstly we have to add the device, insert our computer's IP address, and press start. After that, we can see that uh, the computer has connected to the router and is getting the botnet uh, device's information. If we double, double click the device, we can see all the address spaces that are contained in the PLC controller that is connected to the router. Aside from these two protocols, we've also added the Entrip protocol for devices with GPS functionality. Entrip allows you to obtain very precise GNSS streaming data. Now, if you're an experienced RootOS user, you probably noticed its updated design. With this new layout and color scheme, we hope to further improve user experience when using our products. In addition to that, we've also added Turkish, Spanish and Portuguese language support, improved the German and will soon be adding Japanese language. From this update on, you'll be greeted with an improved Modbus performance, which will expand the communication between industrial electronic devices. Also, we have improved the firewall DMZ page to speed up the setup process of simple port forwarding. Let me show you how that works. The firewall DMZ page is located in the network section of the menu under the firewall section. To configure the DMZ service, we have to firstly enable the configuration, insert the DMZ host IP address, and select what protocol packets should be forwarded there. If we select specific protocols, we also have the ability to select the port range from which the packets should be forwarded. After that, just save the configuration. And that's it, the DMZ is configured. We also can't forget about the new wget failover method, which opens up a new possibility to use failover. We currently have a failover method that utilizes the ping command. With it, the router periodically sends a ping request, and if it gets a response from the server, it means that everything is fine. If it does not receive a response, we can turn on failover. On the other hand, the wget command sends a HTTP request, to which we get a server response. If the response is not received, we then use failover. This new method gives more flexibility and convenience to root OS users. There's also a new option to update the modern firmware from the server. The last thing we'd like to walk through is the Hotspot Registered Users page, which lets you control the registered Hotspot users and see the basic information about them. Let's have a look. The Hotspot page is located in the Services section. In the hotspot page, we can see that we have already configured a hotspot user interface. To see all connected users, we have to navigate to the user's management page that is located in the hotspot menu section. Here we see all users that are currently connected to the hotspot. In this page, we can log out the user, but he will still be able to log in and using the same credentials. In the registered users page, we can see all the registered users to the hotspot service. Here we can delete the users and the user will not be able to log in using the same credentials and will have to register again. These are the main additions and improvements to the newest root OS version. If you'd like to know more about anything specific about root OS, leave a comment below with your questions and video suggestions. And make sure to subscribe to our channel.